What's up, musicians? How are you guys doing today? We're going to discuss a certain type of dominant chord. I want to, I like to call this chord the flat nine, flat five. And um, I love these chords. They have a certain buttery sound. And honestly, I like both the flat nine, flat five, and the sharp nine, sharp five. Now, you may have heard these, but when I searched on YouTube, I saw a bunch of uh, sharp nine, sharp five videos. Didn't see a whole lot for flat nine, flat five, so I kind of wanted to throw my hat in the ring for that kind of video today. So again, that's what we're going to do today. Welcome, I'm Sean Wilson. Welcome to the channel where we discuss gospel music, gospel musicians. It's geared to gospel music, uh, musicians. However, if you're a jazz musician, I'd love to come on, come on and have you. We, we appreciate your, your great knowledge of theory and your um, vocabulary. But again, my explanations are really geared to, to gospel musicians. Um, and so we're all welcome today. So thanks for coming. Hopefully you enjoy the video. Okay, so what is a flat nine, flat five? It's a type of dominant chord that you can use as a passing chord. Um, and so it's a dominant chord with two tension notes. And so basically let's form it first. And so let's take C, a C flat nine, flat five. It's actually a C seven flat nine, flat five. It means it's a dominant chord with two extra notes. So let's take a dominant chord, a C, the third note and the flat seven. And then flat nine means you can take the ninth note and you go one half step to the left, that's gonna make it flat, which is a D flat. Also, the flat five means you have to take the fifth note. I like to take it an octave higher, and I also go to the left one half step, so that's gonna be a D flat for the flat nine, and a G flat for the flat five, okay? And this is how it sounds. See how that sounds? Really great as a passing chord, the C leads to an F. Now, the way that I like, the little trick that I like to use to get this, I really love the language of upper extension voicings and I love the language of triads. So what you do is you take the C, you go up five, one, two, three, four, five, and you simply go down a half step and do a triad, a major triad on that half step. So that's gonna be a G flat. And then you just simply play the C and the E with the left hand. Now, in terms of voicing this, I like to voice it by the left hand making it a tenth interval instead of a third like this. I make it a tenth. That gives it a, a little, a nice little fat sound there. And sometimes I'll invert in, because I'm thinking of triads. It helps me because now invert this triad. You can play it like this. You can play it like this. You can play it like this. But the the two notes in the left hand won't change. It'll be a C and an E. Right. So it sounds really great. And like I said, uh, to me, it sounds that buttery sound. Let's just take an A7 uh, flat 9, flat 5. How would, we, how would we do that? So that's an A. Go up 5. Go down 1 half step. So it's going to be an E flat in my right hand and an A and a C sharp in my left hand. So. Oof. It sounds so nice. They're so simple, so easy to execute, <laughs> so easy to do. Um, and so what we want to do, uh, is this thing recording? Uh, I just want to make sure because I just, this is my third time recording. So let's, let's see, um, now that I showed you how to voice it, how to form it, let's see where we could use it um, in a gospel song. So blessed be the name. Ooh, did you like that voicing there? That was it. That was actually the flat nine, flat five. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right? Ooh. Now someone's gonna say, now how are you how are you forming that? Well, I know that I want a G, right? I know blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm on a G. I'm on a G here, and I want to use that G. I want to use a passing chord at the G. And so I knew that five above would have been a D and that I would be approaching, then a half step down, I would be approaching a D flat triad somehow. So your, your goal is to kind of say, well, how do I want to execute that triad, right? How do I want to play that? So blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, um, um. See, there's my, there's my, it's just the, the idea of triads, I, I love it because remember, I'm thinking in terms of a triad, so I'm just thinking in terms of D flat, right, in my right hand. And I know I have this G at the bottom, and I know I have the third. Now the seventh note I can play. And so I went. See, he is worthy to be praised. So 
So that's let's let's try another one. Um, let's do trust me. Let's see where we can put it there. Um, Do that again, watch this. If you let that voice in, I did it on the turnaround, right? Because that, um, if you will only trust me, trust me, trust me. If you see, so here's a sharp nine, sharp five here, but the flat nine, flat five says, okay, I'm playing an F here, the five would be a C, so. Uh, uh, uh. Half step below that would be a B triad. So I'm playing a B triad now. A B triad is going to give me the flat nine, flat five. So if you will only trust me, trust me, trust me. Ooh, ooh. Just as buttery, man, as that as that sharp nine, sharp five. This sounds so great. And I know where to do, you know, um, my own site sponsors this channel. And, and on the site, we teach where to use a dominant chord because that's really the most important thing that you really need to know is where can I use this voicing, right? And so if you kind of want more details on that and kind of more placement, we kind of go into that a little bit more on my, on my website. So go ahead and check that out in the link below. But again, really easy video, easy chord to add to your playing quickly. Go ahead and see, uh, experiment, see what you can do. Thanks again. I'm Sean Wilson. We'll see you guys later.